hello 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 and welcome 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 all right so this is one that was requested so um and i really appreciate the interaction that i have with my subscribers and i encourage you all to request and um and i tell you all the time that i'll look into it and i will pencil it in so even if I um don't actually you know write a reply and I just heart it just know I saw it and I'm going to consider it okay because my subscribers you guys are the most valuable all right to me so I listen so here you go here you go tarot spills the tea this session is on Miss Portia Williams. Why did her relationship end with Dish Nation? Okay. Who told who to kick rocks? Who told who first? Catch that, all right? And why? This tarot reading will give us the answers we crave. All right. Now, was it for them or for him or did him tell her or did them tell her did she make up her mind herself I don't know what do you guys think um hopefully my smile <laughs> y'all know I be laughing and I again I always say this I'm not laughing at her uh bless her heart okay um, and then check this out. I clarified it twice and then I had to stop because I was like, uh-uh, girl. Um, so this one, it didn't make me feel, well, all of them make me have, you know, some level of excitement because I enjoy doing this. But some make me feel warm and good and some just make me feel excited because I'm into it more. Uh, like the previous one about Wendy Osefo. This one, however, um, made me feel a little bit sad, okay? Which is why I chose the picture that I chose of her right there dead smack in the center. Um, she just made me feel sad. All right, so let's go ahead and, and begin. Just in case. You don't know who I am? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Indigo Sage, an awakened soul. I do have a spiritually based website at unapologeticallysage.com. And you can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter under Unapologetically Sage. All right, so let's sage this out. But first, before we continue, what I need you all to do is bring your beautiful eyes to the bottom of your screen, no matter what screen you're looking at, whether that is your iPhone, your Android, your Cricut, your uh whatever screen, whether it's an iPad, a laptop, a notebook, whether it's a flat screen, a big booty screen TV, whatever screen you're looking at, bring your beautiful eyes to the bottom of it and look at that red bar at the bottom. And what it says is this is for entertainment purposes only and every single word is what alleged and not to be used as facts. So anytime that you see this red bar at the bottom, the sentence inside applies. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, include this real quick. My voice is still a struggle voice right now, but it sounds a little bit better, I think. And so I could not stand that pure quietness. <laughs> So there is a little bit of music in the background and I will try to over pronunciate my words so that um, 
you guys can hear me clearly. So what we are looking at right now is some of her many jobs, all right? Because initially when this um, topic was introduced to me, I hadn't heard that she had quit or left or ended the, you know, um, contract. Because last I heard, they were in contracts, okay? When Miss Juicy Baby wouldn't renew her contract because she said they were they wasn't paying her enough. She said she had been there for 12 years and they were still trying to pay her like around the same that she was getting paid when she started 12 years ago and it wasn't right. So she ended it and she ain't been back. Um, so anyway, uh, these are just a few of them. So, and you guys know how I do it. I give a little short introduction and so that everybody can be on the same, you know, uh, footing at least when I do this story, because some people may listen and, and have no clue who I'm talking about. And so here's a little bit of background. So this is Portia Williams. Um, I first you know, was introduced to her, like many, from the, um, oh my gosh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. I can't remember which season she came on. It might have been uh, three or four, somewhere around there. And um, that picture, that's her at one of the reunions, the first time she wore a crown. And that is, if we're going clockwise, we're going to start at the left lower, where she has that purple or either blue velvet dress velvet gown with the crown um looking just like a disney villain on that uh season's reunion and then straight above it that's her go naked hairline which was to my knowledge the first uh entrepreneurial venture that she had when she was on there but the sad thing is she like never advertised it I only found out as I you know dig around and stuff and look for quality hair pieces and stuff you know and saw that she had a hairline and I'm like girl you got a hairline she never mentioned it like her first second third you know like I think she was on there about five years before she actually freaking you know what when she first really talked about it was at the Bailey Bowl. Cynthia Bailey had a Bailey Bowl where they did sports, carried eggs and spoons and played basketball and ran around. So the biggest sport, honey, the biggest gag was Marlo chasing um, Nene around them uh, that baseball uh, field. And um, that wasn't a part of the, uh, the Bailey Bowl, okay? Um, but anyway, so that, that made it memorable. Uh, but they each, each woman, um, had each castmate had to have their own, you know, team. And so hers was go naked. So everybody was like, let's go naked. And that's when she, you know, that's when attention was brought to it. Anyway, I don't know why it took that long. That's ridiculous. Then dead smack in the middle. She got sheets y'all. She got sheets. She decided to come out with a sheet line. This is one of the later, later ones. Um, sheets and it's called pampered by Portia I think that's a weird title because she has a baby and I know she had to pamper her baby and um and she's probably pregnant in that picture it looks like she's pregnant she has a big red sheet around her and pampered by Portia I don't and I believe they're just sheets just sheets I don't know that's just interesting um but the the description describes them as luxury sheets so they must be what like a 10 million count 10 million thread count I don't know um I remember the first time I up my counts it, it does make a difference your thread count does make a difference all right uh right next to that we have dish nation which is why we are here today then we have Portia for real this is her podcast where she says it's about family I tried to listen twice and it really was just all about her um but she throws in there for a little salt little pepper a little seasoning her mom and her sister Lauren and they're just you know like backup singers or cheerleaders or whatever for her to talk about her life and just back her up you know the the yes people or whatever 
Um, but I, I, I couldn't get into it because I had had enough of her already because she's already everywhere. Um, but then on top of that, that's her mom on there. And then they talk about raunchy sex. And her mom talks about raunchy sex. I don't want to hear about senior citizens raunchy nothing. Okay? I couldn't take it. Right under that is Portia's book, The Pursuit of Portia. And I believe she's writing a second one, or maybe it's written already. I don't know. I can't keep up with her. Then there's the Bravo chat room, which is coming back. I didn't know it left, but it's coming back later this month with, and this surprised me. Because you know, you guys, I do my research to give you guys a, a recap or a review or a, a whatever, whatever you want to call it, a summary. Um, so originally that Bravo chat room started, and I wasn't a regular watcher, okay? Um, that was something I would put on to help me go to sleep. And that that's no shade, it just helped me go to sleep. Um, but originally it started with four women. Then uh, one time I noticed it was three women. And now as they revamp it or bring it back, whatever they're calling it, um, it's only going to be, the regulars are only going to be Giselle and Portia. <laughs> Excuse me, those are allergies. It's only going to be Giselle and Portia as regulars, and they have a full schedule of a rotation of guest host. So... That might be a little more interesting than that stale bread they were serving us before. All right. And then finally, we are at the Naked Lingerie. And that's her in the front with, I think, a telephone. Um, what a cord. Girl, who you calling on an old rotary phone? And then on the left of her is uh, Miss Cynthia Bailey. Okay. So that's that. Those that's just and I know I forgot some of her businesses, but this just went to my point when the um when my subscriber, you know, suggested this and had asked me, you know, my opinion, what did I think about her um quitting dish? I I you know, let my subscriber know that I hadn't heard that, but it makes sense because, and I started listing all of the jobs that I knew she had. And I said, you know, something's got to give because she has a young child who, um, is 100% dependent on her. And so, you know, you, you have to spend some time with your kids, you know? And, um, next thing I know, you know, we're chatting and they let me know that there's different theories about why she left. So I was like, oh, okay. So it's not just like a common sense thing. Because <laughs> she's doing too much, in my opinion, simply because you have a young child. So some of your, and a fiance, you know, um, but some of your time, when you're, ch well, this is my opinion, um, when your children are that young, you have and it doesn't matter this ain't no single mama married mama you know family mama this ain't got nothing to do with marital status plain and simply in my opinion when you have a young child at home and they're in their formative years they need you need to give them a good portion of your time and i can't imagine how much quality time, let me add quality time, she's able to give her daughter when she's steady chasing the bag. And, you know, some people say, oh, I admire her hustle, I admire her hustle. Yeah, that's all fine and great when no one's depending on you, which happens to be your child that you chose to bring into this world. So, yeah, you know, you need to cut some shit out and, and give your child some quality time now. So, <coughs> excuse me, next up, just from my research, I heard that she said that she had too many irons in the fire, so she's cutting back. And then I had heard that her daughter was sick. Um, so... And I read her speech, and it just was very generic. And I don't know where the daughter was sick at. I'm not for sure. That was just something that 
Um, someone told me in passing when I said I was going to do a story on, uh, reading, excuse me, on Portia. But, um, oh, you know what I didn't include on here that I forgot? The, she's getting a spinoff. And, um, I totally forgot and I got a little snapshot of that, but so that's something else to throw right on top of all this stuff that you're already looking at. Where does, um, her daughter fit in at? And, you know, not to mention, but to mention, you got a brand new fiance and I, I suppose, you know, he wants some of your time. I, I don't know, but, but let's, let's go ahead and, and sage this out because I'm going to tell y'all what's going on. So we are looking at the past position. It is in the upright and it is the seven of swords. Ooh, this one, this is a low down, dirty snake of a card. Um, Seven of swords, especially upright in its full glory. It ain't no good. It ain't no good. It ain't never no good, no matter what position it is. Because this card represents deception and thievery. All right. This in the original, it's a soldier who is stealing um, swords and they assume that, you know, it's from the enemy. But and then in the original one, he looks back and he has a smirk on his face like, yeah, I'm getting away with this. OK, what you going to do? What you going to do? You know, um, Seven of Swords is just um, there's nothing really positive about it. The only way it could possibly ever be positive when this when this thievery and deception shows up is if it was in reverse, but it's not. All right. Deception in the workplace that she hasn't been able to emotionally deal with yet. Hmm. And I meant to go through and highlight all every single time the word emotion comes up because it's all throughout this reading no matter what suit what sign what card what position emotional that's interesting to me your colleagues are attempting to sabotage you with gossip so be careful with who you trust it may be the person you least expect let's continue So as I said at the beginning, I did two clarifiers. So the first one, and that was two clarifiers for each. So the first one, well, they both came out reversed. Both clarifying cards came out reversed. So the first one is there's nothing like feeling alive. This one, when it's upright, it's meant to you know, mean that someone just feels extremely happy, vibrant. You know, have you ever seen like a commercial or even a movie where someone's riding their bike and they um, put their arms out and hold their head up and they're just riding that bike, you know, right into the sunset and they just, you know, letting the wind just go through their hair or slap them on the face if they're bald-headed, whatever. You know, and they just feel so good. So, and alive, that's the feelings that this card is supposed to emote. You know, like, that's what it represents. That alive, you know, you just feel so good and free, you know. Um, It was in reverse. And my the energy I was getting from it is that she used to feel like that but not anymore and that's been going on for a while now like to get that to to go all the way from that huge uh, vibrant feeling all the way to zero it takes a while you know because when you're truly happy and your happiness is like killed or slapped down or sliced and diced and cut down, it doesn't happen overnight. That's like a buildup. And that is clarifying the past uh, card, which is, of course, deception and thievery. All right. And then clarifying the clarifier is reversed money and career elevates now. So there's an issue with the money bag, money bag, money bag, money bag. Let's continue. 
So what we've already um, accomplished is, or established, not accomplished, but established is that a huge influence on her decision to leave is she feels like there was deception going on and she was surprised and that means deception and you know gossip and stuff and she's surprised by who it was because it was a person who she least expected I am gonna go ahead and say I suspect um well you know what I thought she got along with all of them so it's really it really ain't no telling but I'm feeling Oh, I should have did a reading on, uh, you know what? I should have did a reading on Ricky Smiley, okay? His energy would have been the one to tell me, um, well, Portia tells me a lot too. Um, but anyway, I'm feeling like it was Ricky, the Smiley, who shocked her, okay? And, and probably tried to stop her money bag. This is a good time for me to, <coughs> because I say the reason, I mean the reason, because I say try, let me explain the reason why I said he may have tried to, because officially he cannot. So throughout my research, I learned, because I thought that he, <coughs> excuse me, I thought that he was like the boss. He is the boss of the Ricky Smiley show. He's not the boss or owner or producer or creator or anything for Dish Nation. His program hosts Dish Nation. So I had to keep going because that didn't make no sense to me. I didn't understand it. Because I always thought he was a boss because I had heard he'd be firing folks and stuff. He, They say he fired uh, Ebony Steele, which I learned that she worked for the Ricky Smiley Show, so he could fire her if he wanted to. But they say that he was being petty because she was getting shine because, you know, she was doing those calls too. Like she, Anyway, they said that she was getting shine, and he didn't like it, and he fired her without giving her a reason. Even still this, to this day, she's doing perfectly fine now, but... Um, she said recently that she still wasn't given a reason and that's when he hired Claudia uh, whatever her name is uh, Claudia Jordan to fill in for her and then he uh, let Claudia Jordan go um, and you know what I'm not sure she said what the, I read her departure speech um, she was there for the shortest period of time of everyone for um a year and um she gave a long speech and then he gave a long speech after her long speech and then someone accused him of firing her which he said that he did not have any power to fire anyone so and he doesn't I was shocked right but here's how that works. Dish Nation is just a little, you know, hot topics or whatever kind of trending news segment to last no longer than 30 minutes. And it has a whole bunch of commercials in there. So it's actually about 17, 18 minutes, but it's a 30 minute slot. Well, the creators, which are two white men, nothing against that. You know, I was, I was just personally a little bit surprised. But anyway, um, they were shopping that show out and it really wasn't go doing good. It didn't start doing good until Ricky Smiley agreed to host it. So some of you may know exactly what I'm talking about, but for those of you who don't, because I didn't. Okay. So I'm going to break it down to you the way that I had to break it down to myself. Cause I just kept on reading, reading and researching until I understood it. So he's hosting Dish Nation on his show. What that means is, and I came up with this scenario all by myself, okay? What that means is, let's say, for instance, your cousin has a birthday coming up and they call you up and say, hey, you know what? Um, you know, I'm just in this little old small apartment and um, I would like to have a birthday party, you know, this year. So, you know, you got that big old house and that pool and stuff and you, you know it's hot. Can I have my birthday party at your house? You, if you say yes, and so in the scenario, you're going to say yes. 
So you would be the host. Now, you ain't got nothing to do with the invitations, nothing to do with the, you know, the the uh, people who come. Nothing, You know, those are all your cousins and, and um, friends and, and schoolmates or whatever, you know. So you don't and you don't have to put forth any money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, your cousin may, you know, pay you a little something, something just just to be nice because you're allowing your cousin to use that space right okay so you're just the host here's where and so my point is with that with emphasizing you're just the host because first of all it's in your house all right so the ricky smiley show is his house this show dish nation is a guest and he's allowing he's he's allowing 30 minute slot for them so he's allowing them to be in his house now tell me if i'm right or wrong even though you're you didn't put in on nothing you you didn't put in on the food you didn't invite the get you didn't have to lift a pinky finger okay because you're just allowing them to use your house right and you're not supposed to have to do anything that wasn't a part of the agreement the agreement was just to allow them to use the house now if one of your cousin's guests become disrespectful or unruly Aren't you going to step up and say, hey, you got to go. You got to get on about my house. Right? Because that's what? Your house. So you can do that. Even though your name ain't on the invitation, you didn't throw the party. You didn't put 10 cents down on the cake. You didn't buy a candle. Nothing. But you still have like an unspoken but spoken, an unspoken but a knowing um, power because that's your house. So you have the power to tell anybody, get out, get out of my house. Now, of course, if, if you know, your cousin says, hey, hey, you know, I'm not going to kick, you know, so and so out. Then what do you say? You say, then all of y'all get out. Now, I know that's what I would do. And, of course, your cousin, you know, who's representing this scenario, Dish Nation, is going to say, hey, hey, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. So then they're going to go ahead and talk to whoever and say, you know what, what you did, um, the host, he didn't like it. You really shouldn't have did that. But, you know, I understand. Like, you know, say whatever you got to say, but you're you going to say it while you're walking this person to the door and you're going to go ahead and kick them out. That's how it works. When it comes to the Ricky Smiley show and Dish Nation. Okay. Because I kept looking to see if he had power to fire Portia or force her to leave. Technically, legally, no. It could be some small, small print in the contract, possibly. But, you know, what's known to us as the public I could not find it anywhere, but I understand the hosting, you know, it makes perfectly sense to me. So in the present, it's reversed. It's page of cups. This represents immaturity and lack of knowledge on how to turn a negative into a positive. And then jealousy kept popping up and I highlighted that because I'm going to talk about that later. Now, what tripped me out is because pages are already immature. They represent an immature person or a young person, a youth. Um, So for this to be reversed, that's like double immature. Double lack of knowledge. And that hurt a little bit because people already be acting like Porsche is stupid. I'm like, girl, so this is in the present position, which means this is directly how she is feeling about this decision. This is her process, <laughs> her processing the decision to leave. This, These are the factors that's going into it. Immaturity and lack of knowledge on how to turn a negative into a positive. Bad news coming your way due to chaos which causes emotional vulnerability and insecurity at work 
These challenging situations block your creativity and inspiration to do your job efficiently. I believe the chaos that came to work was her being sensitive over the way in which she gained a fiancé. Right here was kind of, it was tricky, but not really tricky, more interesting to me because the clarifiers for the reverse page of cups is, um, and I used my deck, the ultimate clarifiers deck that I channeled from the angels. All right. So the first clarifier was reverse and this one says your eyes are closed ask yourself why so with it being in reverse that means she is trying to open her eyes or she believes her eyes are open like you know it's like oh my gosh I can see clearly now I can see now what you're doing you know that kind of stuff um oh um revelation like an epi- epi- oh god epiphany epiphany like she feels like and this goes along with her finding out that someone who she least expected is gossiping um behind her back or trying to stop her money bag so like her eyes are open like oh my gosh i see now what you're doing that kind of thing further clarified by upright take an honest look in the mirror it's time so that represents disillusionment so both of those are about her discovering something like seeing in her mind anyway she believes that she sees the truth of her colleagues now like the truth has been revealed okay I feel like, and I'm going to tell you right up until this, like right now, you know, where we are right here with her decision to leave. In this moment, I was feeling like, okay, they are talking about or pressuring her to talk about this whole fiance thing and how, you know, she came about acquiring him and she doesn't want to. And they've been doing this for, what's it been? Has it been um, for a while now? I was going to say, I want to say seven months. I don't know. (laughs) But she feels like, however many months it's been, she feels like it's been long enough for them to stop. She feels like she's given them long enough chance to stop. And, you know, stop talking about it, stop pressuring her to talk about it, stop teasing her. Because I'm getting a lot of teasing, like um, probably most likely behind the scenes and stuff. And they won't stop. And um, so let's continue. The best is represented by the reversed Knight of Wands. I'm going to tell you something. This one was disappointing. Let me tell you why. So the reverse Knight of Wands in this reading in the best position. So what she imagined to be the best for this decision. Well, let me say let me say this. Let me tell you what it represents and then I'll tell you what she imagined the best to be. It represents directionless bouncing from job to job she is mindlessly changing careers without a clue as to what she truly wants to do she thinks the ability to quit at a whim is cute this is why it's in the best position Um, and you can refer to the list of the current careers I mentioned prior so you know what song was playing in my head because sometimes songs play in my head or visions and stuff like that um the everybody hates chris um sitcom based on chris rock when he was growing up and he the part that stuck out to me 
was, you know, his mom would... <laughs> He always teased and said that his, as he narrated, his mom would, she was quick and able to get a job at any time. She could start a job anytime, and she had many jobs working at many different places, and she was good at it, but um, there would eventually be some trouble. Now, in his case, her case, whatever, the sitcom, the fake television show, it was her mouth, you know, and then she would be going back and forward and getting into it with the owner or the boss or whatever. And one thing she would always say was, my man, my man has a job. I don't even have to work. I quit. And so there were different episodes where there was just a montage of her saying the same thing over and over. And he said she never kept a job longer than two weeks because as soon as they would get into it, you know, she basically she had the security of falling back on her man to take care of the household because her man has a job. She don't have to work. And so that was playing in my mind. They That's what they were showing me when I was going to this car because I was trying to figure out how is this the best directionless bouncing from job to job. I never heard, I ain't never in my life heard of a situation where that's the best I mean if your goal is to have a job okay if your goal is to have a job I don't I didn't understand I couldn't comprehend how that was the best how she viewed that as the best but what she's thinking is like she can quit anytime she wants because her man has a job she don't have to work so let's look at these clarifiers the clarifiers for the best position explains a, further why she felt like being able to quit at a whim was the best. So, and of course, these, not of course, but these came from my ultimate clarifiers deck. So the first clarifier for the reverse Knight of Wands says, how long will you wait before you leave? She was sitting on ready to quit in their face to prove that she doesn't need that small check because she's got a millionaire man. Low-key, she thinks they're jealous. That's followed by the additional clarifier, clarifying the clarifier, aging brilliantly. She feels like she has been there for eight years nearly a decade and believes that's long enough for that job and she feels that she's done a good job and there's nowhere else to go with it so I kind of see I can understand that because literally where else can she go you know it's it's like she's uh vertical and not um horizontal her career there is 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 uh it reached a plateau but if you notice, that's the third card down, okay? The, the most uh, prevalent one was the ability to quit on a whim. And then we have the how long are you going to wait before you leave? So here's the thing. And then we have that jealousy. Now, remember, it, excuse me, it has an asterisk because earlier jealousy came out. And I said I'll explain it later. Jealousy had came out a couple of times but not as much as the word emotion emotionally emotional but uh she low-key feels like they're um jealous that her partner um has a lot of money but it's not as if she straight told them to their face hey y'all just jealous knock it off but knowing Portia and feeling this energy she implied it or something because the thing about it is she feels like she's given them long enough to stop acting that way whatever thing that they're doing that's making her upset she feels like she's given them long enough time to change or stop and they haven't and in this situation with this how long will you wait before you leave it's funny because they're both both parties are pushing each other with that same they saying the same exact thing just in two different ways. 
She's waiting for them to stop acting that way. They're waiting for her to stop acting that way. Because somewhere or another, she turned into a B I Y I H. Okay? Because I used to check out the YouTube, you know, uploads of Dish Nation before the Gobadia. And they had good uh, chemistry. They did. Portia and, you know, Gary with the T and Sherry Shepard. I love me some Sherry Shepard and stuff. And the Chewy and can't remember nobody else's um, name. But um, there was good chemistry there. It was lighthearted. And they did seem like a joking, you know, little family crew. Um, prior to the her coming out with the, you know, Gabadia stuff and all of that. It changed after that. I didn't watch it because I had been left. But I'm the energy I'm picking up, it changed. And... Portia, from Portia's point of view, they changed. From their point of view, she changed. So they're both coming at each other with the same force of, I'm going to give you some time to straighten out, you know. So that's what's behind that. How long will you wait before you leave? Because she's sitting on ready because, again, you know, her her man got a job. She ain't got to work. All right. Now... Plus, she kind of, she, she kind of has a, see, she has a warrior spirit, but, okay, let me not go in, let me not, okay. She don't want to necessarily, she don't want to be pushed out by them because of this decision that she made, which is what gave her fuel to stick around longer than if it was a different situation you know what I'm saying okay um the aging brilliantly the only note I want to make about that is that it was eight years and I've seen her more than once say nearly a decade a decade almost a decade the reason why that sticks out to me is because she's doing that on purpose for and which of course if you were in elementary school and they said what's the nearest you know number around eight yeah you'd say 10 however we're not in elementary school and the reason why she's saying that is because when she repeats this story, she wants to garner empathy. So saying that she's been there nearly a decade and they're doing this to me or they're treating me like this sounds better in her mind anyway than just saying eight years. You know, at least decade, that's 10, so that's two digits Two is more than one digit. I'm just breaking breaking down the simple mind, okay? Let's continue. Up next, we will be saging out the worst in her mind as it pertains to this decision to end her relationship with Dish Nation and... Um, ultimately also the Ricky Smiley show all right to leave his house Uh, but right now I am going to ask you guys if you could please support me by clicking like subscribe and share all right I really would appreciate it and if you're not subscribed which of course I look at my you know uh, YouTube um, analytics I don't know if I'm saying it right, but the majority of you guys, you you come over and you peek, but you don't subscribe. Please subscribe so that um, I can get to the, uh, the number that I need in order to go live with you guys. All right. I think that would be super cool. All right. Continuing on. So here we are. At the position of what it is that she believes to be the worst outcome of her decision, her quote unquote decision to leave. And it's the fool, the fool, upright, fear of looking like a fool, worried about the what ifs. 
What if the opportunities she told them she left for is not successful? Making her look like a bigger fool than they already believed she is. That's uh, legitimate. That, I, I believe that's a legitimate concern. For the clarifiers, we encounter a somewhat rare occasion where it has two different meanings, but they both apply. For the first clarifier, it says many options available. So this one says she can't focus on one opportunity long enough to make it successful. So, and this refers again to the head of the video where I was rattling on and rattling off the many um, entrepreneurial ships, you know, businesses that she has. Um, and if you look at it and no shade, no shade, but what popped in my head as I was saying that the many businesses that she has, um, Candy popped in my head because, you know, she got a thousand businesses, but even Candy can't keep her shit together because her two restaurants, one got a C, one got a F minus minus, allegedly, allegedly mold in the water or whatever, you know, Candy can't keep it all straight. And I know while y'all listening, y'all like that ain't Candy, that's Todd, whoever they equal one, they married, they married. They one unit. Candy got a hundred thousand businesses and some of them are failing. Okay. So in my mind, for me to sit up here and be thinking, you know, like, oh, she she's trying to have all these businesses like Candy, but she Candy can't even keep it together. I don't want no mold on my ice cubes. Anyway, um, so, and not to say that if Candy can't keep it together, then certainly Portia can't. I believe it's all about balance and focus and determination. And for whatever reason, Miss Portia is lacking that right now. Or maybe she does, maybe her brain doesn't have the capability or the capacity to do, you know, juggle 10 plates at one time. You know, um, and so she has to accept her limitations. And she, even though she's releasing one responsibility, it's more in the name of they've made her feel uncomfortable. So I'm just gonna go and uh, say goodbye. It's not, it's, it's more of that and less of. Oh, I have too much on my plate right now. Okay. And so the other, on the other hand, this clarifier is saying it would be worse. She imagines it would be worse if Dish Nation has so many great candidates to fill her empty seat who will excel and become the new favorite. Now, when I say new favorite, it's because in her mind, she was the favorite. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just reading her energy. So, you know, um, the new favorite, someone doing great, you know, and, and if there's more than one, like if he auditions, like, you know, this person fills in for this week and then that person, this week, I don't know. But if, if that's a, like a rotation or something, like if they all excel and do great. Then it's going to make her feel like anybody could have done her job. This is another case. I tell you guys about this all the time to where a person. Their worst is someone else's best. That is definitely the wrong energy to be in. You should never feel like a person should never feel like you know the thing that you imagine worst is for someone else to be successful as long as they're not a serial killer you know what I'm saying within reason shit you know what I'm saying within reason 
But that's bad energy to be imagining or feeling like if this person is successful, that's the worst thing that could ever happen. Girl, you quit. Don't you wish them well? I mean, anyway, then it's uh, because I could go on and on about karma. Be careful with, with, you know, how you're putting your energy out there. If you're wishing bad, if you putting out, I wish for them to fail. Don't you know that's it's a the universe is a mirror. So what's going to come back to you is you wish you to fail. Okay. And it doesn't even necessarily mean that they are you it's just being like a boomerang reflecting right back on you which may be why she's struggling to to whatever opportunity she was feeling like she had it 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 ain't doing she ain't she's not able to do anything with it people are anticipating that she's gonna quit Roa but she has another spinoff show in the makings. How can something... Well, anyway, I guess she want to be the next party for the party. But the the blackish version, I don't know. Anyway, um, next card, Clarifier. Reversed. And this one is simply titled, Shh, It's Your Secret. So even worse, if Ricky had someone in mind already and never told her. Whispers about her replacement behind her back while she was there. Okay, so this is what she imagines to be the worst. All of this goes with um, her looking like a fool and someone else coming in right behind her and just shining. Because um, in a way, she did that when she got on. And you know they say how you get them is how you lose them or something like that. I forgot whose place she took. Um, it might have been Ebony Steele's. Maybe Ebony did both, Ricky Smiley and Dish Nation. I'm not for sure, but um, someone exited and then he had Portia on for two weeks. And he liked her so much to where he was like, you're hired. And she stayed for eight years. And, you know, anyway, so her fear is for somebody to come in and just blow everybody out the water and do her position that she chose to give up better than her. But my thing is, who cares? Wish them well and go on about your merry way. Walk this earth wishing everybody well. Okay, that's the best thing for us all to do. Send everybody love and light and wish them well. And well is whatever they feel like well is. And you'll get back well, good, high vibrational energy towards whatever it is that you are trying to do. And then we'll all be walking around here before you know it, whistling and skipping and smiling and stuff. Continuing. Right here is what's to come. And it was in reverse. And it is queen of pentacles now i'm not surprised to see the queen of pentacles okay the pentacles is your coin your money bag however it was in reverse that's not good not good especially as a future now if that's in the past okay because that mean you know you you're gonna turn it you're gonna turn it up right now, for this to be in the future, mm -mm, no bueno. It means instability and inner turmoil. Chaotic career. You must dig deep to find confidence and inspiration. Right there is where spirit stopped the career part of it. And drug me all the way through the relationship part of it. So, allow me to share. In a relationship, for the wrong reasons. She is selfish, shallow, and easily covets what others have. 
Her insecurities will make her possessive and jealous. There's that word jealous again. It is very likely that she sees her partner as a prize to be shown off rather than to be truly loved. She needs to take some time out of involvement in relationships in order to give herself time to heal her insecurities. That's a necessary step to take before entering any relationship. She needs to do some self-healing work. Now, all of that is just simply from the main card. So let's go over to the clarifiers. The two clarifiers for what's to come reversed Queen of Pentacles is love them back in reverse. And that one is saying no matter what's going on, the divine is asking that you send this situation love. You should realize that sending love to the situation may be the only way to heal from this. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Um, this is what the card means upright, and it was in reverse. In reverse, for this card, it just means like doubling down on denying it, rejecting it, delaying it, procrastinating refusal saying no the definition doesn't change it's just showing her attitude towards that this is where it got really sad for me for her because what this ultimately is saying she has insecurities that needs healing she needs to love herself And then I was thinking, I was just really wondering, did she ever go to um, counseling for herself, about herself, and only herself? We've seen her on the show several times going to counseling. The first time was with her first husband, Cordell. That was because of a man. Herself and the man, whatever, you know, it had to do with a man. Then we've seen her going to counseling, uh, I think for a storyline, to be honest, but the hot dog man, another man. Um, and I know she attended a session by herself, but I think it was about the hot dog man. The man. This motherfucker need to go to counseling for counseling's sake, for her sake, about her, for her, to heal her insecurities. Okay, because she's destined to have, you know, to bounce from relationship to relationship and they're not going to be successful Man, so this hurt my heart. I'm like, girl, heal yourself. And it hurt because it was in reverse. It's like it's the like she's ignoring it. This is something she knows she needs to do and she's ignoring it. And that's even worse because you know you need to do it. Some people don't realize that they have like um, they need inner child healings or um, there's something tra traumatic that happened in their childhood. Well, same thing. Um, you know, just or or someone passed away and they, they haven't grieved properly. You know, just something could have happened and sometimes people don't realize that. So that's one thing. But for someone to know that you have issues and they need to be healed, but you're not doing it. That's a sad tragedy. Okay? And I do remember her telling, I think... Oh, well, look at me getting ready to say Lenithia. I do remember her uh, talking to Nene one time on camera. I think it was Nene or either Phaedra or Candy. I don't know. It don't matter. One of them. And um, she was talking about how she's just now getting confidence because in high school she was teased and bullied and she said she was extremely skinny she was taller than you know the average 
kid and and her face you know and they showed a picture and I was like oh girl yeah you look different um and so she said she was like teased and bullied and stuff and that was a traumatic experience for her so again that goes to my point like she knows she got some healing to do but for this card to be in reverse is is her saying no I'm not gonna she I don't know what's going on that in her oh mm -mm, they said her okay her mom's name is Diane huh because they they're showing me her mom they're saying Miss Diane um dang and then I remember her saying something about well never mind because I'm not for sure if I remember that but um I was gonna say having her father something to do with her father she need she she need she need to do some healing work. The next clarifier is embrace your mess. That was also in reverse. This card loves to pop up. Um, pretending you don't. Ooh, here we go. Pretending you don't have a mess is only prolonging the inevitable. Because this card was in reverse too, which is saying nope nope I don't. This is this is the type of person that you know they got stuff everywhere and they just gonna shove it up under the bed and make the bed. Okay. Pretending you don't have a mess is only prolonging the inevitable. The sooner you embrace your mess, the sooner you can clean your mess for real instead of pretending it doesn't exist. You must understand that pretending something is not there does not make it disappear. Okay. You ain't uh, that magician. I can't even remember the magician's name, but you, you ain't no magic magician to... Just voila, I, you know, what problems? I ain't got no problems. Girl, yes, you do. Yes, you do, girl. All right. And we have one more card, which is her energy card. All right. As if I ain't already spilled it out. But let's take a look at this energy card. The energy card is the Ace of Cups reversed the energy is being sucked out of you and that's causing emotional repercussions within you you find your colleagues being less friendly and less helpful at work which creates frustration within you this frustration ushers in obstacles that leaves you unmotivated to fight through them this is another one that hurt my heart because um it's not like the situation is so huge at work for her that she can't push through again the spirit is saying, everybody hates Chris. Okay, so if you guys have seen that show, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, refer back to when I explained it earlier. That was a TV show where the little dude's mom was quitting. She didn't have a job. She had many, but none longer than two weeks because when she got into it, she was quick to quit. And she would always say... I don't have to work. My man got a job. That shit right there is why she's not going to push through this. Because don't get it twisted. She likes attention. Camera time. She enjoys it. She enjoys being doted upon. You know, when people um, have low self-esteem or insecurities... All that, you know, they 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 crave the attention, the, the positive attention and everything. So, which, uh, mm, that would be another reason. Let me hush. So, that's her energy. And one more thing. Now we've reached the point where I like to sometimes give you guys a quote or just you know something to think about really and 
this was the first thing that came up and I said, wow, yes, spirit, yes. Insecure people often falsify the past in order to make the future pure. Okay. This, if you need an example of, is Portia Williams. And that's very unfortunate. But I already did, you know, a previous reading on her where um, the card said that she lied about just knowing him for the 30 days and falling in love and all that. And, you know, I know some of you are thinking, well, who believed it? Well, let me tell you about myself. It's not that I believed it, believed it, believed it. But I was just hoping she wasn't trifling. (laughs) Excuse me. So I think it's a difference. Um, So I did that reading to see what was going on. And, um, you know, she didn't come out looking the best at all. And I'm, you know, I'm like, girl, I'm through with you. I'm through with you. You know, because I went through a moment of, of that Tyra Banks clip that they play. We were rooting for you, you know. Um, but in reality, she has a lot of insecurity and a lot of self-healing work she needs to do. And she's not doing it. She's pretending that it's not there. And this is how it's coming out and manifesting which this is just the tip of the iceberg like you know she's probably going to implode but I just this quote right here I was like dang this is Portia Williams insecure people often falsify the past in order to make the future pure so she tells mistruths and falsehoods. Bless her heart. Let's all wish her well. And then, if you don't want to wish her well, don't go in my comments talking about, I refuse to wish her well. That whore. I don't need to see that. If you don't want to wish her well, you don't have to. But just and just remember what I said. It's just best for us all to wish everyone well. And, like, wellness, you know what I'm saying? To wish someone well doesn't mean you wishing them to be rich and you not to be. That's not, we're not even on that level. Just, like, mind, body, soul, mental health, well. But anyway, do as you wish. And I want to thank each and every one of you for your support. And if you haven't done it yet, please go ahead and click like and subscribe and share. All right. All righty. Have a wonderful weekend.